Hi everyone! I hope everyone is taking care of themselves and being okay. I promise I am like so, so almost done with this colonization video. I just have a few more things I need to put into it. But I wanted to take a moment to speak to you guys today about Magic the Gathering and what's going on there because I have wanted to talk about magic on my channel because magic has been a very fun part of my nerdy life, but very often I felt as if I did not have sort of the um, the wide berth of knowledge to really speak about it because I'm relatively new. I've only been playing for about two years, I believe. Yeah, too. And I mostly only play, mostly, I only play Commander. I also know that I am often looking for solidarity within different female gamers, uh, especially female black gamers, and I figured that making this video could both have me share my opinions on the topic at hand, but also to let other black women who love magic, hey, like, let's talk on, like, Twitter or Discord or whatever because I think that would be fun. So let's get into the details. So on the 8th, Zayim Beg, who was a contributing editor and then editor-in-chief for Magic the Gathering Retailer and for the strategic site, uh, channelfireball.com, shared this Google Doc called The Wizards I Know. And in it, he talked about the anti-black, racist mentalities that he saw during his time working with Wizard of the Coast, which included things like not hiring people of color, saying they didn't have enough experience, and then hiring white uh, employees who had less experience than the ones that they were um, that they were interviewing before, who were people of color. Um, I am going to link down below to the document so you can go through it at your leisure. It is very interesting and honestly not very surprising. Most of these companies do not really have black people involved. When I've gone to events, I don't see black people involved or other people of color that are not Asian specifically East Asian, and so this did not shock me. And one of the things that he mentioned in this post is that there is a specific card called Invoke Prejudice, which was made like 25 years ago, and he said that that wasn't even the problem he had with the card, it was that when he went to the URL of the card, something that is more recent and could have been changed, it was 1488, which is a um, a racist symbol that I had never heard of before this point. I tried not to know these things. I guess I probably should know more of it. And he brought up that they could have changed it. They have it. And he just gets a whole, a very thorough list of sort of the, the weak gaps in Wizard of the Coast's ability to maneuver race, to really explore race in their products. And as someone who is new to the game, and someone who didn't come into the game for a long time because I didn't feel like there was a place for me in it, I thought it was a really good time to bring this up because we are in a space where everyone is saying Black Lives Matter and wanting very much to show, to show at least online solidarity with black people, but what does that mean? And when companies do say that they are gonna make attempts to do so, how do other people react? Now, I don't think that my opinion is the only opinion on this topic, but this is just my thought. So Wizards did respond and they said that they're working on things, of course, but the first thing they did was ban cards. And they banned one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. So they banned Invoke Prejudice, and I'm gonna put all the cards here so you can see what they look like. What I've also heard about Invoke Prejudice is that the artist apparently is either a neo-Nazi or someone who does a lot of Nazi art, and that was part of what was suspect about it in the first place. So that card has been banned, and as you can see from the art, it does sort of have the like clans hooded, you know, cloaked figure. So that was banned because that was sort of like the card that was specifically called out in the post. Then you have cleanse which says, destroy all black creatures. This one is a reach, and it's a reach that I understand why they picked it, it goes into a bigger issue that we're gonna get into later, but that's one of them that I would say is a reach. The next one is Stone Throwing Devils. Apparently, this is a slur or something that is used as an anti-Islamic term. I have seen it explained inconsistently when I've Googled it. I personally don't think it's a card that specifically invokes that. I don't look at it and see that. However, I might just be uninformed about that. It was picked for a reason that had to do with Islamophobia. Islamophobia can be more subtle than we know. I'm just like, okay, it's a card that does nothing, so I'm not like crying over it. Then it is brandish. The slur is in the word. It's the G word. Um, so I'm not gonna say that, but that got banned. 
obvious reasons. I think that's a very clear one. You can always change the name repackage it, not a big deal in my opinion. Then Jihad, and Jihad came out during the Arabian Nights set, of course. So it has a, like that kind of color-coded wheel element to it, but it's Jihad, and we know that's a very loaded term. It, this comes up all the time when you discuss Dune. You know, it, 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 is a, it is a term that has a lot of connotations. It has become even more so in a post-911 environment. It's very clumsy. I would name a card Jihad, um, and if we, ha if you had a card named Jihad, I would expect that you would at this point have changed it, uh, because that is just not a term that I think that you can use without invoking Islamophobia or specifically talking about that sort of religious element to it. And I know that Jihad has a lot of different con like connotations, like there can be personal Jihad, it's like you at a, at a war within yourself to do something for God. but that is not how the public at large views it, hence why it's so conflicting. Then there's in prison, which is also a slight reach. It, it, it's, I think it's just problematic in a lot of people's eyes and was picked because it is a black man wearing a mask and it, it's called in prison. So the aesthetics of it, considering what is being discussed, it's a very easy one to be like, click, ploop, we did it. Then there's Crusade, which I think is really interesting because I saw people giving pushback towards this. So Crusade is an enchantment and it says white creatures plus one plus one. Which again is like if you had people involved who were of these these ethnicities, you would not make these clumsy mistakes. And I saw on Twitter someone was like, well, they, they revamped it and there's like a new Elspeth um, print of it, which I'll also show here. And I just wanted to be like, the Elspeth is, es Elspeth is white and you're still seeing in this picture all white people. So the connotation of it is not removed, even though it's not the same clearly British you know, Anglo-Saxon characters that were in the original printing of it. They did this because they wanted to keep the card, they wanted to keep what it invokes, but again, they don't think about the art of it, they don't think about the wording of it, they don't think about who they put as the, the face of the card, and, and that ultimately is why I feel like this change is like a step forward but done in a way that is so it does not show any real understanding of the issue the issues at hand is that you are not hiring people to you're not hiring people from these different ethnic backgrounds you're not hiring a diverse enough people who would be like hmm you're gonna name a card jihad we should think about how that looks and what that means are, are we gonna play into the actual islamic uh ideology about jihad or are we going to turn into sort of the islamophobic concept of jihad you know you're, if you're going to make a card called crusade are you going to just only show white faces on it like these are the things that if you have a diverse or at least a very informed group of people you're having those conversations and again most of these cards from what i have seen are not cards that are readily used they are i guess if you have an elspeth deck you want that card for the aesthetic of it you know Sorry about that. You don't have that anymore. So they're not, they're, they're neither, the decision to ban these cards is neither revolutionary nor that interesting. But what I do think is interesting is how the feedback from it already shows the struggle that exists about being a non white person in this game. I didn't play Magic for a long time because whenever I would see people play Magic or have any things about it, I would only ever see mostly white men, sometimes Asian men and Asian women, but that was it. It was mostly a white space, mostly a male space, and I just didn't want to do that. I already played d and I'm already into so many things that, that it occupy a mostly white space. You know, why add one? But then I got to go to a Magic the Gathering event. It was when Vivian Reed was just being introduced to Magic, and I was like, she looks so cool, I want to see this, and I ended up getting like all of that core set and I really got into magic. I started watching uh, The Command Zone and Tolarian Community College religiously. I'd watch, you know, certain streamers do their standard matches. I don't watch them as much anymore because again, it's just too male and too white. I, it, one of them like said like, oh yeah, I love PewDiePie one time. And I just was like, oh, I can't, I can't. It's too, it's too white male. It's just too much of that energy, but I still love it. But at the same time, I, never, even on channels that I love, see women that look like me on that. I never see 
black women on there. I never see women of color who are dark skinned on there. I never see sort of, you know, trans black women on there. I never see the kind of inclusion that I know exists within the fan base because it's a great game. It's a game that can be loved by everybody, but I don't see that there. And it makes it hard as someone who creates kind of thing like, am I, gonna, am I gonna enter another space where I'm gonna be seen as an invader and not like a natural fan of something, even though I'm new at it. And that is very, it makes me anxious. It makes me anxious because I know so clearly and I know so, so vehemently what it's like to be the only girl in a playgroup, especially the only black girl. Like in my, and every time I've played Magic, I'm the only black girl, I've never, played in an event where I wasn't that and when I and it makes me not want to go out to events it makes me not want to be in that environment because I just don't want to deal with that it's very it, it's it makes you feel isolated and I don't like that feeling and so I mostly play with my little paw that I still have I'm still the only um girl but I'm the only black person in it so that makes it you know better for me um but at the same time it frustrates me that there isn't a lot of understanding that that is the environment that has been given to us that we enter into when we become fans of this game because we're seen as being antagonistic it's like is it not antagonistic to say that like when you guys act a certain way it makes us not want to feel involved what i think is also interesting is when people are saying all right hire black creators for magic the gathering hire black artists you'll see people saying like why not just hire the most qualified person for the thing how about that i wish that people could just say that they don't care Care about diversity they don't care about racial or gender parity and just keep it moving you know what I mean like don't pretend that you that you all of a sudden you can't read and you don't understand context and you don't know what's going on and you just make these random statements because this article that Beg wrote explained explained that the company was not hiring black and people of color employees period especially when they could hire white ones so you are seeing that a company is prejudiced in how they hire and the fact that they now had to course correct that use treat as a more egregious thing than the initial racism you think like and this is kind of the, the big thing is that there's an assumption that the, the next black person who gets hired by Wizards of the Coast is going to deal with so much shit. I do not envy that person. I feel so bad for them, especially if it's a woman, it's a trans woman, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a woman, a trans woman, cis woman, non-binary femme, it is going to be hell. Every decision they make is going to be hyper-criticized, especially because people already criticize Wizards of the Coast. They already have issues with it. And this is what I think a lot of people don't understand. I saw someone who was like, how do we know that they weren't just applying? As someone who is currently the only black employee at their site, and I work for a feminist pop culture site and I'm the only black employee, it is stressful to be in that environment. When I started, I wasn't the only um, per woman of color there. I am now, but that wasn't how it was when I started. It's exhausting. It's hard, especially when you also feel like you must tackle the race issue because you're the one who has that qualified background of your lived experience to speak about it. Because then you were always put in a position of being the race baiter. You were always put in a position of having to explain basic structural inequality to people who should know these things, but have been given the privilege to not have to care. Like, I love magic. I, I think it's an amazing universe. I love the idea of creating like cards for magic because I think that there are just so many especially as a commander player, there are so many different things I think could work in there. And I love working with building sets, I especially love the idea of building like a set, like Throne of Eldraine. And I was like, this would be so, I could make it so cool. But you know, like those kind of things I love, I would never apply to work there right now. Because why would I, first of all, I'm not qualified because I don't know that much about magic overall. There are more qualified people than me. But why would I want to enter an environment that has tried to keep me out for so long and is only bringing me in to save face. Why am I going to purposefully take a job that is gonna make a white fans second guess everything I do, assume there's an agenda with everything I do, and who will 
never think that I am there by my own merit. The way I see this, like, hire the best black, per hire the best person regardless of race, they weren't doing that. They were not hiring the best people, including race. They were not. They were defaulting to whiteness. And now that, and now when they do hire a black person, because that has been their standard for so long, that black person is going to be assumed to be in an affirmative action hire and be treated as such by maybe not even the majority, but by a loud enough chunk of people that their mentions will be flooded with that until the end of time. Where is the empathy? Where is the consideration? Where is the actual just sitting with your thoughts and thinking like, hmm, you know, if they weren't hiring people of color for a long time, but they have so many white employees, maybe they should just carve out a certain amount of people of color to, to screen and hire that fit the company. Why is it assumed that you're just gonna pluck a random black or brown person off the streets and be like, you wanna work for us at the coast? To me, when I hear things like that, I assume that you feel like you don't think that we have talent. I assume that you don't think that there are qualified black magic nerds out there, that you assume that there aren't qualified black magic artists out there. I just assume that you think that we're trash because what makes you think that we're not qualified? When you know and we see and we're talking about all these brands that don't hire black people, don't hire brown people, but yet you think the fault lies with us. That comes from you assuming that we just aren't good enough inherently and if we were good enough we would be here even if racism was real. Like we should just be above it, you know? Like you should just be so talented that racism is just like, mm, it's a bummer but like, you know, just jump right over it. That is not how life works. It's so hard and I can already, and I can already see and I'm already seeing people deflecting, people dismissing the experiences that people are talking about. And what I am so frustrated by is that, and still there's this idea that we don't know our own experiences. You know, they'll, they'll go to like, you know, the fact that there's so many Asian um, people within the magic community and be like, well, they're not racist against people of color. Look, they're people of color. And it's like, now you put these two minority groups in a position where they not need to be in conflict when that's not the point. That is not the point. To be like, oh, well, you know, Vivian is leading a set. Ooh, Teferi is leading a set. Oh, cool. Teferi and Vivian. <laughs> Two of them. I'm glad that Teferi is a great character. I wish that there were other great black characters that you wanted to play in the game. You know, like, as a commander player, I would love to just have more options for good, dynamic, legendary creature commanders. You know, like, I have a bunch of different decks. I have like, I think seven decks. I have four, you know, black commanders that I that I play with and, and two of them are Sisse because like, and people don't even know Sisse is black or not because her phenotype changed every damn card she was in. I think the only reason why I eventually figured that she was was because her descendant was black, but then I'm like, that doesn't really mean anything. And she's also from a place that is like where all the other black characters are from. So it's confusing, it's weird. And again, these are things that if you cared about what it meant to see that. Like honestly, and it sounds doesn't sound stupid to a bunch of people, but like when I see like Vivian, Kaya, Samut, um, I'm like, wow, look at these dark skin bad bitches. You know, I'm like, oh my God, look at characters who look like me and can do cool things. I wish, Ka like, honestly, if I could build a card, it'd be Kaya because her Planeswalker cards don't be doing nothing worth it. And I'd be like, girl, why aren't you like Queen Marchesa? You need to be like Queen Marchesa or at least Tessa Karlov, girl. You need to be doing something more than just clearing out people's graveyards because girl, that, Oh, so many times you don't need that ability. In general, it, it, it feels good to see well-made cars that look like you. Not all of them need to be great. You know, sometimes you need to have, you know, a Lyndon the Queen. Sometimes you need to have like that one girl that looked like Tessa Thompson from the Valkyrie thing in that last set. Whenever I see like a, a black female or a black commander period, that's not like Lord Wind Grace, it'll be like, Timna the Weaver plus somebody else, you know, it's like, it's frustrating, it's annoying, you know, you want to have quality cards being built, and the same goes for every race, to have these characters, especially when they end up having stories, it's like, do you understand what it's like to have these characters exist, like, and, and that backstory, those backgrounds, those dynamics make the characters more interesting, and 
you don't always need, I'm not gonna say that, you don't always need someone from that specific background to do it. Cause I know you're all gonna be like, so you can, you Like no, sometimes y'all can do Watchmen, okay? That was good, I'll give you that. But I'm just saying like, why isn't there the opportunity for someone to do that? Who has an investment in crafting an interesting, compelling character of that ethnicity, of that race? Unless you believe that because they are of that race or that ethnicity, that they're gonna be so biased and so terrible that they can't write anything else. That is not true. It is not true. One of my favorite comic book writers, Vita, they wrote the Chandra comic. And Vita is a non-binary Afro-Latinx. Wrote Chandra, wrote everyone banging, just was like not banging letter, but everyone was written well. And it was great. We can do anything if you give us the opportunity and don't just assume that because we are a person of color, a black person, a trans person, a non-binary person, that we are somehow incapable of critical thinking or artistic design. Trust me, there are so many of us who chose to be artists despite what our parents would have wanted us to do, and we are still trying so hard to even break through because we've been trying to work and survive. And I think to those out there who are Magic the Gathering creators, like, Diversify your friend groups. And it's not shade to anybody, because as I said, I love all of these different people, but it's like, you know, if you, just like we're calling Wizards of the Coast, if all of you really do believe Black Lives Matter and you know that there are black people in magic that you love and you want to throw up, put them on your platforms. Share their, share their information. And like, do the thing. Do the thing that you're saying that we should all do. Do the thing that you hold this company to do it in your friend group. Just saying. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I know it's different from what I usually do, but considering everything going on, I thought maybe I would add my perspective to it. If you enjoyed this, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, because apparently that makes a big difference. And of course, thank you all to my lovely patrons for supporting me you guys mean the world to me, and I am so excited to show you what I'm doing next. All right. Bye.